Welcome to the Watermark Photography Podcast, an international offering of Simarca de Agua, a podcast for professionals and enthusiasts to connect and share their stories. I'm Jessica Duque, food photographer and your host. This podcast is brought to you by Sigma, sigmabenelux.com. Soho, Brand Studio. whitebackdrops.com Amy defines herself as a food and photography lover. She's a visual storyteller, recipe developer, book author based in South Devon, UK. As her signature style, Amy prefers to use only natural light and organic textures. In her early 20s, Amy struggled with food and weight, but finding her love for baking helped her to get over her issues. She was very interested in crafting and interiors, and that's how she started as a visual creator. Contrasting what she's doing right now, Amy wanted to be a zookeeper. When she left school, she studied for a diploma in animal care and animal management. She's a published author of two books called Love Amy X, 50 Beautiful Sweet Gifts for Friends and Family. It was released in 2015. Tea Time Treats, deliciously tempting recipes for traditional food and drink to make, bake, share, and give. This book was co-authored with Janet Hayward. It was published in 2016. Amy is the winner of the Pink Lady Food Photo Awards in the category Food Blogger in the years 2019 and 2020. Welcome to No Watermark Photography Podcast, Amy Twigger. Hello, Amy Twigger. Welcome to No Watermark Photography Podcast. This mm -hmm. is the English Take on Simarta de Agua Podcast, the photography podcast I have in Spanish. And I would like to say thank you for accepting the invitation to this episode. And okay, Amy, uh, I would like to talk to you and you know about your specific style it's so beautiful I've been following your uh, trajectory or your journey as a food photographer but I discovered also that you are a published author so you have two books right yeah okay right. exactly so but let's talk about a little bit uh, about you who are you introduce <laughs> yourself to the audience please um well um I'm Amy and it's weird, I never know how whether to introduce myself as like a photographer or a food person. So I'm always yeah. I feel like I've got so many different hats on. But um I guess I'm like a recipe developer mm -hmm. first and then food photographer and stylist sort of afterwards, but I've kind of become more known for the photography <laughs> yeah I understand that uh, it is really difficult to describe yourself and I I understand that part when I started this journey I didn't know what I was uh, mm -hmm. I was sharing a few recipes and I was making photos and I wanted to be a food stylist and I wasn't like in a limbo in a photography limbo this is how I call it and in the end I just decided to go for I'm a photographer and a food stylist I I study, I did some studies and to, to get the diploma and to learn, to learn a little bit of the tricks, how to treat food, this and that. But when it's about your photography style, how would you mm. describe it? Because I know how people see it. I know how I see it, but how do you describe it? Um, I think I tried to keep it quite realistic yes. and messy and um obviously it's dark and moody but I never felt like that was intentional no. I think it's kind of like raw in a sense yes but I think obviously some of the recipes I create are a bit flamboyant and crazy so sometimes there's like a magical element to it but I don't know <laughs> I think I would describe it as dark and moody but I don't think that's really purposeful it's just kind of like the light I'm drawn to 
yeah, in certain ways, like a little bit dark and moody, but it has a beauty and the richness of those colors you incorporate and make them pop. Oh. No, I like that. I find that a compliment because I do feel I'm quite drawn to sort of like an older era than yeah you know. it's from another era what what you do but uh I love how you work uh with what you have uh in this season let's see I have a, a beautiful memory of this uh quiche I don't know if it is a quiche and you made some roses with the beetroot and with the carrots and beautiful compositions and and you share what you do and how you do it and this is really beautiful and some people yeah they come and and try to to emulate what you do because it's in, in the end it's inspirational how is your creation process how do you do you have like a specific routine before starting making a photo do you think about it do you draw what's your magic or are you completely spontaneous yeah. Sometimes I'm in, I will be really sort of, I will draw everything out and I'll have a plan. And other times I'm more spontaneous. Yes. Like throughout the year, different seasons, I've, I find I'm more inspired than others. So say like at Christmas time or in the autumn, yes. I'm always like buzzing with ideas and I've got like everything. I've got like lists of ideas I want to do written yes. down. But yes. um, other times of the year, I'm not really inspired and I'll have to go and kind of find ideas online yes but at the moment I don't I always find April a really funny month I never feel very inspired in spring which is weird because you'd think like there'd be loads that would inspire me but well let me tell you you are not alone normally it's like on the beginning of the year I'm like stuck about what I what I really want to do what's the direction I want to take this year because when you see back uh, all the things that you did in the past and then you say oh my god this is amazing and now what am I gonna do it is yeah I feel quite stuck at the moment actually it's weird like I feel like I'm at sort of like a midlife crisis and I'm like oh I don't know it's I'd say that's kind of like not inspiring me as well like I think oh I'm bored with my photos I'm bored with the recipes I'm creating and I feel stuck almost as to what to create next because I feel like I do the same thing over and over. But I get like this every year and then yes. something will spark it and then I'll be like buzzing with ideas again. Yeah, I, I love uh, from last autumn, those uh, mushrooms you made mm -hmm. with meringue. They were absolutely gorgeous. I was like blown away in how you explained the whole process and they were like super easy and you never imagine like oh my god they are meringue mm -hmm. mushrooms they were beautiful everything you do is beautiful but um in terms of like looking for inspirations you take some time off and you also yeah, browse on internet. yeah i look on like pinterest or instagram yeah. or even i photograph something completely different so oh. like i'll go out for a walk in the woods and take pictures of something different mm -hmm. and kind of I find switching up and doing something like that always kind of sparks inspiration again and do you feel sometimes um, or maybe it's not your case but when you look uh, in inspiration online that your creativity is maybe uh, affected by that or it doesn't affect you um, at all Oh no, yeah. So I think I'm my work, own worst critic as well. So I'll look at stuff and think, oh, that's really good. I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are but like your worst critic. <laughs> at the moment, I'm bored, I think, with my style. So I'm going through a phase at the moment where I'm looking at stuff that's completely opposite yes. to me. And I want to part of me really wants to try and do something really different but I don't know I, I've got that sort of doubt with should I try it or just stick to what I know I don't know I know people uh you're a reference for everyone like everybody knows who is Amy Trigger and your style and it's beautiful and you want awards and this and that but it will be like really interesting to see something like yeah wild from you I know you I know you have some ideas I, I know you do when you 
sort of the photography that seems to be sort of in right now it is very bright and harsh light and yes it'd be quite interesting because I love harsh light even with my style I do, I do use it quite a bit but it'd be interesting yes. to use it in a different way than I use it where it's very sort of commercial I'd love because I don't really do commercial types of shoots you know mm-hmm. it's all very storytelling home it'd be really interesting to try something different even if I just do it for fun but. it would be nice it would be nice because yeah. I remember I did a course with you uh, last year and a workshop and together with Ross and uh, she's the owner of the account, her little, ma- her dark materials, sorry. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a lovely experience to meet you both and to learn from you because this is something that we repeat constantly in the Spanish podcast. If you really want to learn from the people that you admire you have to go directly to the source to see mm-hmm. how they do it how they work it not to copy them but yeah. to take the best out of it and transform it into your own uh, thing and yeah. I think what I did was like really uh, wise because I I admire you for so long and also Ross and uh, this is this kind of photography you told me, and Ross also told me, this is really specific. This is a very specific niche and probably doesn't have a, like, like the same impact as, a, as commercial. And, yeah. But it has a specific audience. And I took the best out of you. You taught me how to work in, you know, in, that, in that kind of a light because I asked you, should I bring some uh, flashes or something? And then you said, nope, just natural mm-hmm. light all the way. <laughs> And uh, and this year I got my first commission uh, job in this kind of style for an opera, and I was so happy and that everything that I learned from you both I could apply a few you know oh. you know yeah. details into my photography like okay this is uh, maybe the way I but I did it with artificial light I'm sorry but I had mm-hmm. to <laughs> that is the only the only change but do you feel pressure every day? to create something new do you feel that that thing that probably Warhol or other artists felt like okay the world is waiting for you for your next creation do you feel that yeah there was um I would say last year I felt like every day I had to come up with a new idea and it like I'd be up till like three in the morning sometimes like trying to come up with ideas and it was kind of getting sort of unsustainable <laughs> Because I, I don't get a, a lot of work, so it was kind of like, what? why am I doing this mm-hmm. to just put it on Instagram? And I think the shift in Instagram where the algorithm was has kind of changed, it was kind yes. of like I was doing this for nothing at all because my pictures weren't being shown to anyone. And then I think it wasn't my best work because I was forcing sort of mm-hmm. ideas. So I've kind of... I don't post as frequently now as I did and I take sort of more time sometimes I'll still just take a random picture just for the hell of it because just so I have something to post but yes yes uh, I think I'm more thoughtful in the things that I make in a sense I think right now, uh, and because this is a really important subject nowadays, like the pressure of creating and the algorithm changing. And I had a, a guest for the Spanish podcast that is coming soon, coming out soon, the second season. And she's a marketing specialist. And she just said, it's not the algorithm. It's you sometimes that, like you said, you are forcing things just to be present every single day on social media. But um, how can I say this? I know, uh, and we all know that Instagram is like is like just showing people videos because yeah. they are competing to be the next TikTok or whatever. But mm-hmm. in your case, I don't think it's you, Amy. It's the algorithm that is not working the same as always. You are like... I mean, you are super perfectionist because I know you from that day, from the from the workshop, and you are looking into details. Like I never met someone like you. Like when Rose and me first shot together, she was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, why you you're like no one cares about that. I'm like, but that angle isn't right. <laughs> I, I I don't know where it comes from either because 
I am such a free sort of spirit with everything else but like yeah. if my thing is in the wrong position I like have to shoot it all again yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's good to, you know, it's good uh, what you're doing right now. I mean, if you have something in your archives that you know it's like gold, you can repost it. Why not? Yeah. I, mean, I never, I went for a stage where I didn't do any repost, but I've been doing a lot lately. I, I've just realized well, why not, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you are not the first no, and, and the only one doing that. There's nothing wrong about it. Maybe you have a treasure and you want to, you know, bring it back because you have a new audience that is not going to scroll all the way down to find that specific post that you know it works. Yeah. That's, that's it. And um, and lately, uh, I've been talking to a lot of uh, professionals that are, you know, in uh, they are like suffering of this burnout, this creative yeah. burnout. And we are talking, okay, how are you, uh, what are you doing right now? Okay, you're taking some time off. And then they, 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 the, big, the biggest concern is like, oh, my engagement is like going down. That's what I sort of found. Like after Christmas, like I was getting like negative, like it was the line of the thing was like below. For the first time sort of ever, like every week it was just the numbers were going down. And I was just like, and it had the opposite effect. It kind of made me think I'm not going to like lose sleep over it like I used to and have it rule my life it's gonna happen if I don't do video and I'd never ever done video before and I didn't have a clue how to do it yes I thought well I'm just gonna try it and see what happens and that's why this is uh, the other question I have for you as a food photographer do you really think it's necessary necessary to showcase your work you know on video Is it working for you right now? Because I've seen your latest videos and they are beautiful, by the way, as your photography. And is it working? Um, well, I still haven't got any work, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> for Instagram, I haven't had, I've only had like minus numbers on once when I hadn't posted for a few days. So mm -hmm. it's helped kind of stay afloat for numbers then. Mm -hmm. but it's not really about numbers I found since I had more followers I had less work so I yeah this is this is the mathematic we are doing uh, also in some episodes is that really the, the number like really means like customers I like real customers the more numbers I had the less work I got because I think people felt I would be too expensive yeah maybe it's the, the wrong impression I think it's the wrong impression. Yeah. I mean, your your uh, your photography is like a really high quality and everything you use and everything you do and the time it takes, I, I know that is money. It cannot be cheap, but people uh, shouldn't be like confused by the numbers of your followers. It's ridiculous. I don't think so well for anything, but I don't know. Yeah, I think it makes you seem more unapproachable. And I think if brands imagine that you're out of their price range, And then you are unreachable, you know, yeah. like, yeah. But then I remember the first time I talked to you and because, uh, okay, we have this perception of oh, this person is really important. Maybe she has like tons of messages on there on her DM and she doesn't have time because she's busy. And in the end, you're so humble and down to earth that I really love your, your way to talk to people. Like, okay, like we know for, you know, for so mm -hmm. long, like friends is, is completely the opposite. So you are one of the few. I'm really happy that you are like this. <laughs> okay, uh, a tip for beginners. If yeah. natural light is not an option, what do you recommend? Because when I was there, you told me this is natural light workshop. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, let's do it. I only use natural light. Mm -hmm. uh, I have bought like a really cheap, um uh like a box one mm -hmm. and certain rooms of my house have only got light so if I want to do a shoot with the fireplace it, I have to use the artificial light and it, it was so cheap it hardly cost anything okay. and I mean it's not, it's not going to look amazing compared to someone that's spent hundreds but I think invest in a cheap artificial light yes Like a continuous like, light or flash? Um, well, I haven't. The only one I have is just one sort of 
Mm-hmm. I softbox. Box. Mm-hmm. Shop, yeah. That's all. I, I think play around with that because I also find if you take the white um, thing off, you can actually play yeah. around with it and put things in front of it so it casts shadows and you can kind of mimic sort of a window. All right. Okay. But and I, uh... I always say try to find natural. <laughs> <laughs> it works and for... when you've only got at night. Yeah, and we are all curious to know uh, what is your equipment, what's your gear, because we have in the Spanish uh, podcast photographers, excellent photographers that use a uh, crop sensor camera and they use a kit lens and they don't use uh, artificial light. And still they are award winners and super professionals. And what's your equipment? Because... Sometimes people th people think, oh, you need to have the the latest camera or that lens or well, this I and that. A, I do have a good camera, but I've yes. only had it for like um, two years. So I've got a Canon 5D Mark IV. Yes. And until like three weeks ago, I was only shooting for the last sort of four years with a 50... 1.8 lens that cost like 60 pounds uh-huh the nifty 50 i have that one three weeks ago i did finally get uh 2470 oh wow yeah the sun i was fed up of having to like have my table almost on the floor and I, most of my pictures i'm now on the floor <laughs> wow. oh wow yeah that's the thing like my tripod yes is just, I don't I need to really invest in myself like, I never like to spend money on equipment yes I don't you know sometimes so you I am a better tripod as well okay now I actually have a normal size table oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the floor But, um, it's weird I've noticed I because I live in my window is quite a low window yes Because I had my table low for my mm -hmm. camera, like the light was always really nice. But now I have a normal size table. It's like, oh, the light is really strange higher up in a normal position. Yeah. So I'm tempted just to, I don't know. Yeah, but I really the way you, you think sometimes because uh, every challenge for you is an opportunity. And, yeah. and you will always come with something magnificent. This is what I see. Okay, you're a photographer. You are an outro recipe and a book writer and this and that. Do you have another area of expertise that you feel comfortable that, that we don't know yet? Or would you like to explore something else in the future? Mm, I'd love to explore sort of all creative um, okay. sorts of things. I'm really into like love pottery and ceramics. Oh. And I did, a few years ago, I did... Um, start making a few things but then I never got back to it I'd love to get back into that again that would be nice and then we have a, a prop collection from that. Amy <laughs> yeah I think that would I could just make my own props <laughs> yeah that would be awesome it would be great but, um, I don't know I I do I'm really crafty like I love making stuff even out of paper out of clay all sorts of things yeah That's for sure. And, and it shows every time you make something with your pies or your quiche or your recipes, it shows. I don't have the, the, the talent you have. You are like really crafty with your hands and really delicate. That's really cool. Okay. And I have mentioned in a previous episode uh, that you are an example Uh, of how to deal with the copycats. You said that you don't waste your time fighting if the other person is copying your photos or getting mad. You just change. That is an opportunity yeah. for you to change and to get out of your comfort zone. And when you do that, everybody's like, wow, Amy did it again, you know? That's what, but I think that's why I am going through this sort of crisis now. Because there's someone that's basically like me. And every time I see her post, I'm like, oh, I need to buy a different outfit or I need, you know. So I think that's what sparked this latest thing where I'm like, right, I need to change. I need to do something different, find a different angle. Or yeah. Like, 
I think it's it sparks you to kind of because I get stuck. Uh, I don't want to create the same stuff over and over again. So it, it it's good for you, I think, and it's kind of healthy as a creative to kind yes. of boost you to keep going. Yeah, I and remember. also at, like art school, people learn like painting by mimicking other artists. So I don't get upset about it because that, they're just kind of maybe they're trying something out. I don't know. And do you think it's flattering or it's just annoying sometimes? I've, it's never ever bothered me before until recently. Hmm. But I think I don't think it's that. That's I think it's like a load of factors of like burnout and not having the same amount of work. I think it's kind of everything lumped in together now that has made it me be bothered by it. Whereas I shouldn't, shouldn't bother myself. <laughs> Well, I have spoken with uh, another uh, colleagues and then they said that the market is really saturated and yeah. the, the pandemic uh, helped to that because many professionals, they just quit to their uh, professions and they said, okay, I'm going to grab my camera. I'm going to start making recipes. I'm going to start making photos. And then this market probably in 2016 wasn't that big. Yeah. Because I remember uh, when I was working for, for a company in Amsterdam, we ran out of food photographers and they, that, that was the chance I got to, to make photos. And that's why I'm here because uh, yeah. that was my opportunity to learn something new that uh, I'm really uh, passionate about that is food. But now it's like everybody's like doing and doing and I see yeah. more people and then I see more Amy's and then I don't know. It is like, but. I think that's why it, now it kind of bothers me a little bit because I think that's not fair. I've kind of shown you how to do this for free and now you're the one that's making the money from it and I'm not. But I shouldn't be bit. But I'm not bitter about it. I want people to mm -hmm. succeed. It kind of like swings and roundabouts. Yes. Okay. I think it's kind of like everything lumped together. Where if, if you asked me, like, if you sent me a picture saying, oh, this person's copied you, I'd just be like, oh, yeah. Like it wouldn't, <laughs> when, when, you sit in, when it's like every day, it's kind of like, I need to change. I need to buy something different because they've bought everything the same as me and it looks too similar. Yeah, props and, 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 and the dresses and stuff. I've seen a couple of uh, copycats, but in the end, people know... <laughs> I do, I do, I do, I do think it's nice, you know, I think, wow. Well. And then I think to myself, come on, brands, I obviously have an influence. Why <laughs> <you don't> have... <laughs> don't worry, Amy, in the end, people know your uh, golden nuggets. People know, okay, mm -hmm. this is Amy. And I remember Ross saying during the workshop, this angle is Amy. And everybody knows that. And I know because I tried to 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 recreate something like you did with like your own persona, like trying to do like a preparation. And I said, no, this is too difficult. This is something just Amy can do. Do you have any course or any uh, workshops that are coming next that you would like to promote? Uh, I am I'm going to Canada to film. Um, it's for a pastry um class but it's going to be about photography as well yes so that will be because I've always wanted to do an online course but I've never been brave enough to do it by myself oh <laughs> it's I, difficult I, my standards are too high and I think I wouldn't be able to put together a course to the standard that I want so this person is filming it so I thought yeah okay I'll do it so um it's I don't know when it will be out but there is an online course coming soon so we'll have like photography and then I'm going to teach how to make my crazy pies. Like, pies. Like pastry, so. That's really cool. So you're flying to Canada to do that. Uh, when is that exactly? People from uh, Canada, listen. May. May. So that's uh, around the corner, basically. But I don't know when the course will be um, out yet. I'm not sure. Yeah, from the experience of uh, recording an online course is madness I remember. I've never I don't show my face so that's why I've never done it yeah. but I think that obviously everything's online now so I just have to get yeah well to me my experience was in Spanish and even in Spanish it was difficult 
is like, you know, getting used to see yourself on camera and trying to explain everything, you know? Oh, I was on, uh, I filmed something um, for a TV show. Uh-huh. A ago, and I was just like, oh my God. I was like stepping out of my comfort zone. And, but that is and good just, in the end. You know, I just have to be brief. <laughs> you are, you are. I know you are. Okay, Amy, what would you say to teenage Amy? Oh my gosh, don't be too much of a perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, Amy, little Amy or teenage Amy is really good because it shows uh, you're going to be a, one of the best photographers you will see. I think as well, I tell myself, because I have got the worst sort of self-doubt and it's I I don't like you're telling me I'm good but I just think yeah I don't believe you you know so I'd probably try and tell the teenage Amy to okay. believe in herself more <laughs> <laughs> but is is this being you know like is this part of like this imposter syndrome that many of mm. uh, the artists and photographers feel sometimes like you don't believe the I mean how good how great you are but you know you are no it's weird like I'll look at all my pictures on Instagram and I want to delete like all of them <laughs> no I have, way. Like, I have a two week window where I like it and then after two weeks I'm like oh wow that was absolutely awful I could do better than that but that is a that is a good thing I mean you are your own competition to have that really you know clear in your mind And you just, what you just have to do is like be better than yesterday. I think I could notice all the mistakes in my own work that like you said, no one would even notice. Like there's like a flower that's in the wrong place and I'll be like, oh, because I've seen it and I know it's there, it will bother me. I understand. I understand. And uh, when I was there, like seeing you, uh, you know, doing the, the post-production, I said like, oh my God, this is really cool. So quick. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, you know, your angles and how you position things and this and that. And then you said, oh, I don't like how the tin is because the tin has like, you know, this part like this. And I was like, well, nobody's going to know. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> nobody's going to know. It's okay. weird because I'm not like that any other aspect of my life. Like, I'm a complete mess, like, <laughs> but, but with oh. that, I am like really, I don't know, I think it must just be a thing, like, <laughs> a family trait, I don't know. No, and the thing is, like, we are our own critics, and we probably, I, we don't listen what others say, but we listen what we say to ourselves, like, come on, you should turn this like this or like that next time, but this is good, you know, in the end then you work better and better and better next time. Okay, tell me something, Amy, because you won the Pink Lady Food Photo Award two years in a row. Yes. And does it really help to your business? Um, I don't, I like, it probably did for someone in a different category, but I didn't find it has helped me in any way. Okay, but when people say, oh, Amy, you won a Pink Lady Award, woohoo! Yeah. Like- I mean, I guess, I guess it's, um, I, don't, I don't think it's helped get work. Maybe it's made people take me more seriously as a photographer, because I think before I was kind of just like a blogger. Okay. See? I don't know. So that helps to create more authority, basically. Yeah, Okay. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I always have conversations with other colleagues and they ask me, oh, Jessica, tell me about the experience with Fidelia. And then I was like, okay, this is something you do in the beginning of your career. It helped you. Yeah, the thing is like, Fidelia is a marketing tool. Let's call it this way. Yeah. It helps you to get a good uh, positioning on the SEO of Google. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And when people uh, Google your name, the first thing that is coming out is the Fudelia Award. And mm-hmm. people think, oh, my God, she's good because she, she won an award. And many of my clients, they came via 
uh, Google search. Yeah, you know, it helps as a marketing tool. Yeah, that's it. I should, I, I never, I think we should mention it more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it definitely helps. The thing is like, yeah, I, I think I'm going to uh, make a, a, a new episode talking about the different awards and then we can talk the pros and cons. And stuff. For me, I might have noticed it more. I think the blog, when I entered it, was called the Food Blogger. Mm -hmm. I think it's just something else now. And how and was I the transition? How was that, that transition uh, from food blogger to being considered as a photographer? Um, yeah, it, it's strange because obviously I get hired for jobs where I do everything. So mm -hmm. I cook, I, um, I style the food and I take the picture. So it's kind of like people can hire me for the whole thing whereas on a normal shoot you'd have like the home and the normal person doing the cooking you'd have like, yes. um the food stylist the prop stylist the photographer yeah, whereas, like, I'm, like the one man sort of show so it has kind of i don't know it's got me um some interesting jobs but i never like um Kimberly who you interviewed before she now has kind of stripped everything back and she just kind of just does the photography or yes. just does the styling yes yes yes, yes. I, haven't, I haven't really stripped it all back and just focused on one thing I'm still kind of juggling all the different things. you are in the limbo I was <laughs> like okay who, who I am, I? am I I don't really know what I'm most passionate about but I was definitely I, I, I think the world mm. is waiting for, for something different. Maybe yeah. it is a good time to not say I'm, goodbye. I'm at, yeah, it's bubbling up. I'm just trying to work out what. <laughs> when you look at what does well on Instagram, it's really strange. Like, it's all very like the TikTok type. Mm -hmm. like, I look at um, Viola and she produces, and like Betty um, from Stem and Fork, and yes they produce the most beautiful videos that i've like ever seen yes but they hardly get any views compared to something that's shot on an iphone and it's like some fish fingers like <laughs> i don't you know uh, there was like a fish finger video that had like millions of views and i'm just like i don't understand what's happened the pandemic has changed the type of content that people want to consume i i found I think people want uh, to consume something fast, disposable, yeah. moving next. Yeah. And, and they don't then... care about the like the art or the quality. Like, and I think brands don't care so much now either. They're quite happy for it to be like a phone, yes, sort of unpolished type thing. So I think it's changed the type of content. Yeah, I don't know. It's made me question oh should I just do some stuff on my phone but then I'm like why not oh, I can't sell my soul I don't know why not maybe maybe it is more like uh, approachable maybe people think yeah those uh, high quality videos like super good produce are not affordable but you can do the same thing you know the good quality even with the phone why not yeah yeah so you can present well, both options out. and then you can ask I which settings I was meant to use like three videos ago. <laughs> Before <laughs> that, I did the wrong thing. I was like, I had to message Betty like, which setting am I meant to have that one? <laughs> But um, uh, I know we are going to get through this. Uh, I'm not bothering much about Instagram, like not about growing an audience. Uh, I would love to keep, you know, building a community, you know, in the end, it's like a loyalty to, to build that, you know, that loyalty and yeah. that community with the people. I don't care if they thousands of thousands uh, are following me, but probably they are not the right people. Yeah. And, I'm happy this way. And I, I did a bold move lately. I just switched to Spanish because it's, it is my language. And I realized that it is basically a neglected audience because everything is in English right now. And uh, many of the Spaniards uh, and the Latin American people, they don't follow super quick the English language. And I remember many of them telling me, Jessica, if you're going to do something in Spanish, I'll be there. But in English, it's like too difficult. Mm -hmm. 
in the end. Yeah. I noticed a lot of people um, that I followed have started to go back to just using their native. Yes. Sort of, yeah. Because they've added the translate thing even on the comments now, haven't they? So yes. They yes. 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 But mm -hmm. this is uh this has been uh has been a really cool conversation, really open and really honest. And I appreciate that, Amy. Your mm -hmm. honesty and uh your kindness is you are unbelievable. And please believe when I when I'm telling you you are one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna leave all the information of Amy here in the description box of the of the episode, and you can contact her uh on Instagram. I'm gonna repeat it here. Is a uh, Twig Studio with double G, and that is uh, her name on Instagram, Amy Twigger. Thank you very much for uh, being here at No the No Watermark Photography Podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy, and I wish you a great, great day. And I hope to see your new creations. I know they're going to be a hit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. Goodbye. Bye.